The door of the portalizer is quite heavy, so please be gentle when late raising and lowering it. We insert the substrate into the proto laser in the same orientation that we took it out of the proto mat. This is because both machines operate on the bottom side of the substrate first and then the top side. A little bit of tape in the proto laser helps to maintain its position. Once we are settled with the placement of the substrate, we can go ahead and close the door. You may notice that the light has turned back to green. When the door is open, the laser is off and cannot activate. Therefore, the light turns red. Once the door is closed again, the laser can reactivate and therefore the light turns back to green. After laying your substrate in the proto laser, the first step is to start a new document. If this is the first time the software has run, the new document screen will automatically be open. If not, simply go to File, New, to open this window. There are two tabs here, similar to the proto map. The one on the left is Projects. These show a list of recent projects that you may want to relive. On the right is templates. Similar to the proto mat, we have a list of templates that give us a basic order of operations that we want to perform. In this case, we will choose the PLU4 PM double sided no THP template. Make sure that the bottom two buttons are ticked, both proto laser U4 and supported by ProtoMap. This is important to let the software know that you are cutting and drilling on a ProtoMap. The Proto laser can cut and drill holes with its laser, but it is not especially effective. Therefore, unless required, we strongly advise you use the ProtoMap for these steps. Click Load Template to continue. The next step is the material settings window. This is an important step as it defines how powerful and how many passes the laser needs to make to correctly etch your board. The machine type will always be PLU4 for the proto laser U4 that we have here at the Hive. The material settings for one of our processes will be either the Hive non-plated substrate or the Hive plated substrate. This material choice does not depend on whether you plated your material, only whether the material that the proto laser sees has been plated. This is important again because a plated material will require more passes and a stronger laser to correctly etch all of the copper. For our case, we have an unplated substrate, and therefore I will select the hive non-plated substrate. Material thickness in this case, does not matter, as we are not cutting this board out. Click OK to continue. Next, we must import the pre-toolpath file from the protomat. Place the file onto a USB stick, and then insert the USB stick into the side of the monitor. A window may pop up telling you that you have inserted the USB stick and asking you what to do. You may ignore this window. In the application, go to File, Import Old Version in order to import. If you choose File, Import, or Open, you will get an incorrect result. In the Open window that pops up, select your pre-toolpath file from your USB stick. The design will appear under the Layout tab. 
It is a good idea at this stage to confirm orientation of the board and correct fiducial placements, for you will not be able to adjust these later. If they do not look correct, try re-importing the file or restarting the software. The next step is to generate the toolpath. Simply go to the toolpath menu in the main toolbar and click Compute All. This will do the hard work of calculating the actual laser toolpath for the tool. In the window that pops up, confirm that the word cutting is nowhere to be seen. If it is, it implies that the machine believes that it will need to cut out either a board or holes in your process. This is likely incorrect and the result of you selecting the wrong template. So go back and start a new document and try again. Click close to close this window. Next, we need to do a placement step. Similar to the protomap, we need to tell the software where we are actually going to etch the board. To do this, we will align the fiducials in the design with the fiducials on the substrate. First, go to the Processing tab. Once in the Processing tab, the first step is to turn on the pilot laser. The pilot laser is a very small laser that points exactly where the main laser will etch and allows us to very precisely locate where the fiducials are. Turn it on by pressing the black laser button on the main toolbar. To move the head, double click anywhere on the substrate in the main window. This makes big jumps very easy. However, once you get close, you're going to want to use the buttons on the top right. The arrow keys allow much smaller and much more precise motions. It is a good idea at this stage to be looking at the substrate itself while placing. Here, we can see that the fiducial has appeared in the camera view on the bottom left-hand side. Thus, we know that this is where the lower left fiducial is. To move the board, Similar to the Proto Mat software, simply left click in the middle of the board and go to Placement. Move the placement window out of the way, left click and drag the board to place the fiducial in the crosshairs. Zoom in using the scroll wheel to more accurately place the black and white pinwheels that signify the fiducials onto the crosshairs where the fiducial actually is. Again, this does not need to be exact, but simply close enough for the software to locate the fiducial on the first try. Once you are comfortable with placement, simply click OK. The last step is processing. To process, simply click the play button in the main window. The machine will run through some prompts similar to the protomat. It will ask you if you have processed drilling on a protomat already, which we have done. Select OK. <clears throat> it will ask you to mount the material with the bottom side facing upwards, which we have done. We will click OK. It will ask you to confirm material settings. Not much can change here, so click OK. Placement, we have already done. Click Continue. Now the machine will locate the fiducials and align your design to the substrate. It will ask you to confirm each fiducial individually to make sure it has the right one. Click Confirm to do so. If it has not found the fiducial, you may use the arrow keys to move around 
and then start a new search at the new location. The fourth fiducial is very important for confirmation that you have the correct set of fiducials. It should be exactly on point. Because it was, we could be confident in the placement of our design. And thus, the etching can commence. Halfway through the laser etching process, the machine will ask you to flip the material about the symmetric axis. This is the X axis. So we will go ahead, lift the cover, remove the tape, flip the material, retape the material down, and close the lid to continue. Once you have closed the door, hit OK to continue. The software will ask you to do another placement step. This is because flipping the substrate is not an exact process. Zoom out using the scroll wheel and pan by clicking the wheel to locate the board's position. Notice the software has automatically flipped the board for you. Turn on the pilot laser again and this time, we'll be looking for the top left fiducial. Double click there. And use the arrow keys to move around to locate the fiducial precisely. Notice the fiducial appears in the camera window on the bottom left again. Zoom in to the board and drag down slightly to realign the fiducial with the pilot laser. Once you are comfortable with this, click continue to continue the process. The software will again attempt to align your placement with the design by locating the four fiducials on the corners. Click continue as the fiducials are located. Again, the fourth fiducial should be exactly on point in order to confirm placement. Once the four fiducials have been located, the machine begins the etching of the top side of the board. You may also notice that the design has readjusted itself to the actual placement of the fiducials, whereas this black outline is where I had originally placed the design.
The tool works by cutting the copper into very thin strips. Thermal conductivity is a function of cross-sectional area. Therefore, when the tool heats these strips, they curl up and can be sucked away by a vacuum. Once the tool has finished etching, it will ask you to go and process the remaining part of the process on the proto mat. Go ahead and remove the board from the tool to continue. As we can tell, the machine has left a little bit of copper still on the design. Therefore, we will use a little bit of the Scotch-Brite scour pad to remove this remaining bits. Now that we have finished the etching process in the proto laser, Go ahead and shut the door carefully. And then we can move on to the final step, contour routing in the proto mat. Place the substrate in the proto mat in the same orientation you removed it from the proto laser. And then close the door.